This will be the last time I talk about the MVP topic. It's done. No more videos about the MVP race. I've made a couple, not too many, not a crazy amount, but just two or so videos about the MVP race. And this is the final video because I think I've seen enough in the season. And unfortunately, the likes of LeBron James and Joel Embiid are not going to win the MVP at this point in time because they've just missed too many games. And it's now all of a sudden when this happens, I've talked about it before, narrative runs all. There's always got to be a new name in the mix. We can't just have Jokic who's been the front runner or close to the front runner all season long. We can't just say, oh, Giannis is probably in the mix or Damian Lillard. No, we've got to chuck someone else into the mix and that's James Harden. Now, when I made this video last, I actually talked about James Harden and I'm going to be honest, I was wrong because I talked about James Harden and how he should be getting MVP recognition because he was playing like one of the best players in the NBA at that point in time, if not the best and nothing has changed. He's still playing amazingly. But what I failed to kind of make more of an emphasis on was the fact that he's just missed too many games. He's just straight up missed too many games. So he's just not going to win the MVP. He just can't. In my opinion, when you compare him to Nikola Jokic, 15 games different. In terms of what Harden has done in Brooklyn, he's played 32 of a possible 47 games. Jokic has played 47 of 47. What are we talking about here? Are we being for real? Harden has not done that much more than Jokic to the point where you can get away with missing 15 games in an award that is a season-long award for the most valuable player. And what is the most valuable thing? Availability. Like, come on, let's be honest. This is not a competition. I would say Giannis and Damian Lillard, those guys who have been more available, they've still missed some games. Jokic yet to miss one would be closer in my MVP rankings than Harden. And in my opinion, James Harden might have been the best player since he's come to Brooklyn. Maybe. He's not clear-cut, he might have been, but that's not enough to give you an edge on someone who's played 15 extra games, or do you want to talk about his games in Houston? The eight games in Houston where he wasn't great and he wasn't interested for half of those? Are we going to count those? Even still, that's still an extra seven games. That's a huge difference when we're talking about an MVP trophy and the most valuable player over the course of a season. Now, before I get into it in a bit more depth and talk about why Jokic is the clear-cut MVP, it's, it's not really a competition anymore, and people are just trying to make it a competition because I guess it drives clicks and stuff, because I have seen a lot of people say, at this point in time, James Harden is the MVP. No, he's not. He's just not, let's be honest. But before I do that, if you could drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel, I make content like this every single day and doing so, it just helps out a lot. It's free, it would be much appreciated. So that would be cool, but let's get into it. James Harden, since he's come to the Brooklyn Nets has been fantastic. We're not gonna argue that, but he's missed 15 of a possible 47 games for that said team, as opposed to Nikola Jokic having played every single game. You look at the records, the Brooklyn Nets, 32 and 15. The Denver Nuggets, 29 and 18. A difference in three wins? Is that enough? You look at the offense of each team. Both of these guys have been the catalysts of either team's offense, respectively. Throughout the course of the season, the Nets are the second rated offense. The Nuggets are the third. Is that a big enough difference? Like, there's just slight differences in terms of maybe Harden has performed slightly better. I don't even know if that's true, but maybe he's performed slightly better. I could understand if you came from that angle, but that's just not enough. You've missed 15 games. What are we talking about right now? And people are kind of making the argument, oh, but he's missed games with Kyrie Irving and he's still led them to wins. He has been good in those games. That is for sure. But Kyrie Irving has only missed a handful of games since James Harden's been there. And only a handful of them have been wins. He's lost a couple of those games and he's won four of them to Detroit, Indiana, Phoenix, and Portland. A couple of good wins in there. We're not going to deny that, but we're not giving you an MVP award for carrying your team to a couple of wins. <laughs> let's just stop this right now. But if we just look at the stats, let's entertain this just for the sake of entertainment. Let's say, okay, James Harden, and Nicole Jokic. Let's just put him up against the wall. Let's say who's had a better season statistically. Jokic is having a very similar season to James Harden. He's turning the ball over less. He doesn't have the same kind of assist numbers, but his scoring is similar. His efficiency is better. It's just very similar in terms of their numbers. There's definitely not a distinguishable difference between the two of them, apart from really the efficiency, which Jokic is the one who's distinguishing himself with incredible efficiency ahead of pretty much most people in the NBA. And then getting back to the thing with James Harden, people are kind of making this narrative because he's won a couple of games without the help of Kyrie Irving. Kyrie Irving, like I said, has only missed a handful of games since James Harden's been there. Even before when he did miss those games, Kevin Durant was there. I mean, crazy. I know that's tough, isn't it? Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving, take your pick. Are we going to ignore Kyrie Irving putting up 28 and 6 on 50-40-90 this season? 
Like, this man's having a ridiculous season. It's not like James Harden has had some kind of terrible running mate. Even outside of Kyrie Irving being incredible, Joe Harris? Nick Claxton's a solid player, Jeff Green, Bruce Brown. I know you're probably laughing at these names because it's like, oh, these guys. Like, they're solid role players, and that's all you need when you've got two superstars consistently playing your games. So, in terms of that, I don't really buy into that argument either. Basically, on the Harden and Jokic discussion, because it's picking up a bit of traction, I think Harden is the second favorite to win MVP at this point in time, at least when you hear people talking about the MVP. Most people are mentioning Harden instead of the likes of Damian Lillard, Stephen Curry, Giannis Antetokounmpo, all of those names. Just to round out the discussion between Jokic and Harden, because I'm going to talk about Jokic individually in just a second. Statistically, impact-wise, team record, all of those things are very similar. They're very similar. And then, oh, 15 games. Uh, he's missed a third of the season. Or we could count his Houston games where he didn't care. I was wrong. I was talking about him in the MVP conversation. He just can't be. He's missed too many games when we're talking about the most valuable player. Surely it means a lot to miss that amount of games. And then something I don't do too often in terms of individual players, I'll look at advanced stats for teams and try to draw conclusions from that. But individual players like basketball reference advanced stats, I think sometimes it's so hard to put them into context but just for the sake of it, let's look at some of their advanced metrics, box plus minus, win shares, all of those things. Jokic is leading the league in offensive win shares, total win shares, offensive box plus minus, total box plus minus. Basically, these advanced stats are trying to say that Jokic is contributing to more wins than anyone in the league, and he's contributing to more points per 100 possessions than anyone in the league. When you look at any advanced metrics, which again, if you don't want to look at advanced metrics, that's perfectly fine. You don't even need to. But if you do, he's leading it in pretty much every category possible. So this is, it's not really a discussion, but I'm talking about it right now because people are trying to kind of bring in a different name. It's just boring to have someone who's been there the whole season. He's been steady all season long and he should win the MVP. They're trying to spice it up, but the reality is it's Jokic. It's Nikola Jokic is the MVP and it's just not really close. In my opinion, if I were to say other names, it would be Giannis and Dame. They've only missed a handful of games. Dame has carried a team with players out. He's been incredibly clutch and won them a lot of games based off that clutch shooting. Something Jokic has been good at as well. He's been good in the clutch, but Dame has been historically clutch. Giannis is doing Giannis things. We know for obvious reasons why he's not going to win it, but that doesn't mean he hasn't been great. In my opinion, I'd still say Jokic has been better than these guys, plus he's played a handful more games. Those guys would probably be second and third, if I were to say. And then you've got the likes of Steph, Kawhi Leonard. I mean, we've seen Steph and Curry's team without him, and then his team with him. They're a playoff-ish team with him, without him. They're the worst team in the league, so there's reason to believe he's an MVP level player, but they're just not going to win enough games. Let's just look at the top four MVP candidates, I'm pretty sure in most people's opinion, based off this season. And let's look at one common denominator amongst three of them. You've got Jokic, you've got Harden, you've got LeBron, and you've got Embiid. Three of those guys have missed a large portion or will miss a large portion of the season. One of those guys has played every game. <laughs> I mean, we're really arguing for the sake of arguing when we know for a fact it's Jokic's award and he's already won it unless something unfortunate happens. And I just want to emphasize how important Jokic is to the team and just looking at some of the things that I think make him so great and so different this season. 24 of Denver's games this season, wins or losses have been decided by 10 or less including the Utah game as well, which was 11, but it was against the top-seeded team at the time and Rudy Gobert. So let's just add it in for the sake of it. Through those 24 games, he averages 31.5 points a game. Jokic is averaging a significant amount more in games that have been decided by 10 or less points. Jokic is significantly more effective. He scores a lot more points. He's more aggressive in games where the team need him to be. He'll just take the back seat if he doesn't need to score a lot of points. I mean, recently against the Hornets in a 25-point win, he took seven shots all game long. Just against the 76ers and Hawks, he took 12 and 14 shots respectively. He's not aggressive if he doesn't need to, but when the game is on the line, when it's a matter of Jokic scoring 35 points to win the game, no one this season has done it better. And his efficiency doesn't change. He continues to make shots at an efficient rate. If he sees Michael Porter Jr. has it, He'll hand it over to him. Is there anything more valuable than a player that can flip the switch just like that? He'll say, oh, the Nuggets, we don't really have it going tonight. So I'm going to drop 32. I'm going to score 15 in the last quarter and help us win the game. 
Oh, we've got it going tonight. I'm going to take a back seat. I might get 10 assists. I don't really care how many assists I'll get. I might play 28 minutes. I'm going to let Michael Porter Jr. get up 20 shots. I'm going to let Jamal Murray get up 20 shots because I know these guys come playoff time. The more confidence they have, the better they are, the better the team is going to be. So there's nothing more valuable than not just a player who can turn a game when he wishes, when he needs to, but can also take a back seat. There's value in that as well. He's giving a guy like Michael Porter Jr. a lot of confidence because he's someone that is allowed to have games where he's taking 20 shots because Jokic is fine to take a back seat. We're winning? Sure, take as many shots as you want. We're losing? Give me the ball. I'll win us the game. That's Nikola Jokic this season, and the numbers back it up. Now, I've seen quite a lot of people talking about James Harden as the MVP. He's not. I just newsflash, he's not. I think James Harden is having a fantastic season. Let me make that very clear. But 15 games is not light. That is a significant portion. And when you're splitting hairs between players who's had a better season, 15 games changes everything. And then when you look at Giannis, we know why he's not going to win it. Damian Lillard, I think Jokic is having a better season, in my opinion, if you argue otherwise. I don't mind hearing an argument for Damian Lillard and Giannis, but not James Harden. 32 games, let's be real. I was wrong for even putting him in the conversation because he's been great. If we're talking about best player in the league, sure, chuck his name in the conversation. If we're talking about an MVP award, a season long award, we're not talking. What are we talking about? It makes no sense. Anyways, that's all I've got to say. Nikola Jokic is the MVP and that's exactly why. Other than that, my camera's done. Have a good day. I'll catch you next time. Like the video. Bye.